Excellent. So now let me start the screen share, start the PowerPoint. There we go. Excellent, excellent. All right, so um, we're going to start our epic journey as we often do when we gather um, with a land acknowledgement. Um, for those who are unfamiliar, a land acknowledgement is a formal statement that recognizes and respects Indigenous people as the traditional stewards of the land uh, and the enduring relationship between those folks and their traditional territories. Uh, further, to recognize the land is actually an expression of gratitude and appreciation both to the land itself and to the folks on whose territory we reside. So with that, uh, we invite you to take a moment with us and take in and receive this land acknowledgement. We at Santa Rosa Community Health acknowledge that our eight health center campuses are located on the unceded homelands of the Southern Pomo, Wapo, and Coast Miwok people who lived in relationship with this land for thousands of years prior to colonization. We honor and pay our respects to the elders, knowledge keepers, and descendants who are working today to preserve and grow Indigenous identity, language, culture, and connection to this land. Well, thank you for sitting with us and holding that acknowledgement with us. I'm now pleased to start sharing some details with you about Santa Rosa Community Health, which is the organization that is both hosting the Epic Trail Challenge and benefiting from it. So. Our organizational vision is a just and healthy community where all people can achieve their full potential for health and well being. So um, you'll learn out the gate that Santa Rosa Community Health does not play small and has big plans for the world. Uh, toward that end, Santa Rosa Community Health provides high quality medical, dental, and mental health care for about 40,000 patients. That's one in four Santa Rosans who are unable to get health care elsewhere, mostly because financial barriers limit their access to private health insurance. In fact, 80% of the people that we serve live at or below the federal poverty level, which is not a number that many of us understand or, or spend a lot of time with. So just as a frame of reference, this year, the federal poverty level is an annual income of $27,750 for a family of four. In addition, about 9,000 of our patients have no insurance at all. So we do this work at eight distinct campuses with nearly 500 employees. It's a big family that's doing amazing, big work in our community. About 33% of our patients are youth under the age of 18. And in the past five years, we've seen significant growth in the number of patients that we're seeing who are over the age of 65. Most of our patients experience health inequities, uh, including shorter life expectancies and higher rates of chronic disease like diabetes and high blood pressure. This is ultimately why um, our mission and our values include the concept of health justice. We believe everyone deserves the right to a full and healthy life, regardless of our race, income, primary language, immigration status, age, or any other of the traits that we may carry. This belief is pulled through in the tagline of the Epic Trail Challenge. We call it, we say it's the hike for health plus justice. So um, now, moving on from our host organization, uh, what the heck is an epic trail challenge? Uh, and before I answer that question, I have to comment on this photo because this is a pretty good indicator of how it goes um, out on the trail. Uh, this is a photo of three of our teams from last year who happened to meet up on the top of Bald Mountain while we were hiking in Sugarloaf and some, some uh, uh, goofiness ensued. Uh, so, uh, okay, so there's two parts of our Epic Trail Challenge. Both of them are challenging. One is an endurance hike, um, which is hiking 11 or 20 plus miles in one day. The other is a fundraising event. So we'll talk more about the fundraising later. Um, for now, let's talk about the endurance hike and how we work together to get everyone ready to do something epic. So, um, hey, while we're here, why don't you throw in the chat, I'm curious, um, just off the top of your head, this is not a commitment in any way, um, 
how many of you are thinking about doing 11 miles and how many are thinking about doing a little over 20 miles let's 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 see let's see how that stacks up so the first part of our training program is our epic training hikes so their purpose is to build confidence and to prepare us for challenge day some of us could hike 11 or 20 plus miles today, but it would probably hurt pretty badly that day and for like a week afterwards. So the idea is um, uh, working together to have you able to hike confidently and safely on challenge day. So another part of why we do these epic training hikes is uh, another one of the major benefits that folks get, which is exposure to a whole bunch of amazing trails in Sonoma County. Um, so our training hikes take place every Saturday morning beginning February 4th, February 4th, excuse me, for the 14 weeks leading up to Challenge Day. So uh, don't worry if you can't make Saturdays, you can do these hikes whenever they're convenient. And a lot of times groups of folks form who go on Tuesday night or Sunday instead of Saturday or start later in the day because they don't want to get up early, those kinds of things. So in order to um, uh, give you information about the training hikes, we use a GPS navigation system called Strava to share our routes. So here's an example of one of the routes that we did last year. Um, you can see that there's a map, you know, here's a start and end point, there's a map of um, of the route itself. Um, there's an elevation profile down here. So you can see this route started out super easy and went downhill and more downhill and downhill. And then they had to climb this big old hill. We had to climb this hill and then whew, we were done at the end. Um, so we, that's part of what comes through Strava. Um, there's this distance that shows how far the route is however comma this is not a distance bible and your tracker probably will come up with a different number than this tracker did so just keep that in mind um, and then the amount of elevation gain that occurs so um, this Strava is a free app that you can download on your phone. Um, in fact, I encourage you to download it tonight and start playing around with it because uh, it's good to know it when you start. We'll do tutorials to help with it once we get started up. So um, these hikes, the training hikes start at one or two miles with minimum elevation. That was one of the um, first hikes that we did last year. Um, and they're very doable no matter where you're starting. So even if you're coming off an injury, we start out very gently. Um, and um, after each hike, the distance and elevation increases. Uh, well, sometimes we catch a break and the distance or the elevation goes down. But for the most part, there's a, there's a structure of um, it, it gets longer and harder as time goes on. Uh, so the training hikes are highly recommended um, for you to help you prepare for the challenge, but they're not required, of course. They're, they, in fact, all of it is is um, all of the training parts for the hike are totally optional. Um, there are more pieces of our training program beyond the training hikes. Um, so we have training partners. Um, here's Scott Macedonio from Baseline Training with his partner at the top of a peak that's elevation 5,287 or 67 feet. Um, and here's Kenny Brown. He's the owner at Heart and Soul Sports. Um, he also uh, uh, marks our trails for us. That's what's happening in this photo <laughs> um, on challenge day. So um, the two of them have extraordinary experience in endurance events, in um, uh, training our bodies and what gear we need to use and, and all that stuff. So together, um, we have put together a whole training program that will prepare you physically and mentally to succeed on challenge day on top of the training hikes. So here's just a, a quick look at the first month of last year's training calendar. So there's a bunch of interesting uh, things to, to note here and, and how our training calendar works. Each day or each, each, um, each week, there's information on the day on, on each day that gives you suggestions for how to train. So these mileages are showing half a mile slash one mile. Um, the half a mile is for the folks who are 
um, training to hike 11 miles. Um, we call that the 11 T group because that makes me laugh. Um, and the one mile, the second part after the slash is for the folks who are hiking 20 miles. We call that the 20 group, which just makes sense. So each of these you can see over time. Um, here's the first week. The second week on Monday, we're encouraging you to walk or hike one mile if you're part of the 11 group or two miles if you're part of the 20 group and it continues to increase over time um, here uh, there's two days a week that we're saying you should do weekday mileage um, with a rest day later on you don't get the rest day anymore you just get sunday <laughs> so it, it increases over time as well You'll also see that there's information about cross training. So we're suggesting here on Tuesdays and Thursdays that you do some cross training. Um, so these cross training exercises, these are handpicked by Scott, our, uh, uh, he's a specialist of some kind, I can't remember his title right now, but he, he knows stuff. Um, uh, he puts together these uh, different uh, training regimens and we send out videos each month that say here's here's how to do this without hurting yourself um, so you can choose to do these things or if you like to ride your bike or go swimming or do yoga all of those things count as cross training so you can do what you already know and love or you can do our exercises none of them require any equipment um, some of them require stepping up on something if you you know most people have a bathtub if not a stair or a chair so there's there's lots of ways to work it all out. Um, you can also see on here that um, on the weekends, on Saturdays over here, um, this shows our training hike, our locations. So um, that little image of a dog is maybe what you expect it to be. Um, <laughs> it means your dog can come hiking with us or my dog can come hiking with us. Um, either way, dogs can come on those trails. So about half of our trails that we hike throughout the Epic Trail Challenge are dog friendly, including this year for the first time, um, Challenge Day, um, you can bring your dog if your dog can hike 11 or 20 miles in relatively warm weather. Um, so um, what else can I tell you? This also shows our clinics. So um, Kenny and Scott both host a training clinic once a month. Um, they cover topics that range from how to avoid getting blisters to uh, how to strengthen your the muscles specifically needed for hiking um, to um, what gear is available uh, to what food to eat, what what hydration to drink, how to calculate what your body specifically needs, all of those things. They're very good at, at sharing all of that information. Um, then you can see uh, fundraising clinics are on here. I provide training for, through these clinics on how to use Strava, Epic Trail Challenge Basics. Um, we like to ask past uh, challengers to come and share their experiences. And I'll share more later about other stuff that happens during fundraising clinics. Um, so there's lots of, of uh, both information about how to, um, how to do stuff safely and then plenty of opportunity to practice it. Um, so the other great thing is that Scott and Kenny are always available to help you throughout the challenge. So um, Scott offers a free consultation and Kenny offers a free gait assessment uh, and a store discount at Heart and Soul Sports um, that will help you find all the right stuff that you need, uh, both for how to take care of your body and what what tools you can use to support it. Um, so somebody said early on, like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to see if I can fit this into my life. And I, I'm here to tell you, we know you can't always find the trail. Um, I've, I've participated in um, three, all three years of the Epic Trail Challenge, and each year I've trained differently. The first year I did all the w weekday hiking and the, the practice hikes, and that was, that was okay. The second year, I only did the practice hikes on the weekend, and that hurt really bad. I'm not ever doing that again. <laughs> Last year, I started doing the cross training exercises uh, and figured out that it made a huge difference um, in my own sense of confidence and stability on the trail and um, recognized that I'm, I'm not ever going to let that go again. This year, my intent is to try to do all of it. It's really hard, though. There's, there's, um, it's, it's a lot of attention um, where we have work and 
family members who want our attention for some reason and you know on on and on are the are the potential reasons why we can't do it um here, here here's the bottom line when you do as much as you can it works in terms of training for the program so you don't get you, you don't lose your gold stars if you miss a practice hike or you can't get your cross training in um it just makes challenge day better um, each each thing you can do makes your experience at the end better. Um, ultimately, our goal is to have you feel safe and confident when you're on the trail for every adventure that you're doing with us. So um, we, we we hope that you can you can support that as you're as you're building up into this program. Um, we also um, have some uh safety stuff speaking of safety um we have some safety pieces that we uh feel are important um first of all um at practice hikes uh we provide a half hour window um for meetup prior to our hikes um so this is interesting too um in years past this meeting meeting window has generally been between 7 30 and 8 in the morning on saturday mornings um, and I'm considering listening to all the people who have complained that that's way too early and we shouldn't do that anymore. So I'm thinking about making it between 8.30 and 9 when hikes are sh shorter and then going earlier when they're longer because you run into heat and crowds and all that stuff. So if you have a preference, go ahead and let us know in the chat. Uh, would you like practices practice hikes to start early or later? Um, so when we have this meetup window, whatever it ends up being, Either I or one of our EPIC volunteers will be at the meetup spot to sign you in during that time. Um, we'll talk about the route at that point, any concerns, any needs you have. A lot of times we do tech support with Strava at the trailhead, which only works when you have reception. Um, so then it just gets exciting after that. Um, we also uh, use that time to buddy folks up. There are people who prefer to hike alone and that's totally fine. They go off and do their thing. There are others who join the program because they wanna make hiking buddies. And so um, it always works out that there's somebody who is interested in hiking with somebody else um, it gets really clear pretty fast who hikes at what speed and what works best for some folks and not and for others. Um, so there's there's always an opportunity to hike with somebody. Um, and so we, we won't ever send you out by yourself if you don't want to go. Uh, so then after you're done with your hike, uh, we ask you to text me and say, I have completed. Um, this last year, for the first time, we had a number of people who didn't do that, and so they start getting stalked by me, um, and if I don't hear from them, then I reach out to their emergency contact and say, here's the last time we saw this person, this was the agreement, they're probably fine, they probably just forgot, help me find them, thank you very much. So we, we track you down if you don't uh, show up at the end of the trail like we think you should. Um, also, one of the reasons that we like Strava as a GPS navigation system is because it has a function called Beacon. It allows you to send a text to up to three people of your choosing um, that gives them a map of where you are so that folks outside of the challenge can also be keeping tabs on you and keep you safe. Um, and then in the context of, you know, you know, pandemic-y things, uh, just want to let you know that the health center and the epic trail challenge follow cdc guidelines when it comes to public health so whatever safety uh, protocols we need to follow around that we will all right we have a couple of other resources to support both the training and the fundraising um, one of those is our epic scoop newsletter it comes out every tuesday at 4 p.m on the dot usually. Um, and in that epic scoop, we have that week's practice hike um, with the map and information about where to meet up and all that good stuff, whether there's bathrooms, <laughs> all that stuff. Um, we have answers to questions that we heard out on the trail. We have updates or changes that may have occurred, um, tips from local experts and past challengers. Here's what poison oak looks like. Here's how you deal with ticks, all the good stuff that you need to know when you're out on the trail. Another Another reason we like Strava is because it, we have a private Strava group that's just for our challengers. So um, we can use that community. It's similar to uh, social media um, where we can use that community to ask questions, invite people to go on a hike, um, 
engage. Uh, we can also record and post our hikes. A lot of times folks will take pictures um, and it, it ends up being a, a fun uh, community adventure. So, all right, I am going to talk about challenge day and then I'll stop share and we'll we'll do an assessment of what we've learned in chat and see if there are any questions so far. So one last piece, the, the moment we've all been waiting for is what the heck happens on challenge day. So this year challenge day is May 13th. That's a Saturday. Um, and after we've trained together for 14 weeks, we're gonna hike either 11 or 20 miles. So what that day has in store for us um, is a beautiful adventure out of Lake Sonoma. We're very excited to share um, that this year's event will take place at Lake Sonoma. They've been very welcoming and they're excited to have us and, and can't wait to have us out there. So that's super exciting. Um, while we're out on the trail, there will be aid stations along the route. Um, aid stations have water, food, uh, medical attention, chairs, chairs are really nice, um, and in general camaraderie. The folks who run our, our aid stations um, are full of personality, so who know who they don't even tell me what they're doing. I think that's on purpose because they you know it drives me a little nuts. Um, but nevertheless, uh, it's they're fun and great places to be. So we'll make sure that along the trail, you've got everything you need. And bottom line, if you get to an aid station and you can't go on, there's a ride back to the start. So that's always an option. Um, we also invite you on challenge day to bring a comfort bag. Um, a comfort bag is any kind of bag you want um, that is filled with things that you would like us to hand back to you at about halfway through the hike. So some people bring a change of shoes or socks. Some people bring chocolate that they don't want to carry around because it might melt. Um, some people bring, um, uh, somebody had a massage gun last year. Um, there's all kinds of, <laughs> just all kinds of stuff that you might want to bring. Um, it's anything that might bring you comfort as you're midway through your hike um, that you don't want to carry with you. Um, so lots of options there. Uh, just a heads up warning, we're going to have a really early start time on challenge day. Um, the 20 group is going to be starting at 6 a.m. and the 11 T group is going to be starting at 7 a.m. That's um, due to our permitting process. Um, we need to be out of the way before traffic comes in because a part of the a portion of the trail is on the road. Um, so uh, something to note this year, there's there's minimal out and back, possibly no out and back. So um, they're, 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 that's exciting. There'll be some road travel for folks who are hiking the 20 the 20 mile route, um, and then and then you won't ever see it again. So uh, once you cross the finish line, we're going to throw you an epic party. We're going to celebrate your monumental achievement. Um, we're going to hand you your epic t-shirt and provide you some delicious food. And you could hang out and relax, um, enjoy your, your fellow and sister challengers, um, and have a beautiful, um, a, a beautiful closure to your adventures. All right, so I'm going to stop the screen share here. Um, and just check in and ask Naomi to to let's let's debrief about the chat. What have we what have we learned so far? Sure, sure. Um, first of all, just you know, it's so exciting to see so many people interested in the Epic Trail Challenge. And I'll tell you a little bit about myself later and why I'm participating in this. But right now, the only question I see in the chat is about um, making the training hikes the maps available. Uh, to everyone, even if you can't make the training hike. So I said, yes, absolutely. The routes are shared. You will be able to go on those hikes anytime you want and sort of follow the program. And of course, if you have your own hiking program, you can do that too. This is to help support people and to create community. Nice. Thanks. Uh, so what about folks who are, do we have a, a preponderance of 11 milers or 20 milers? We have definitely a preponderance of 11 milers and a couple of people saying they're hoping to do the 20 miler and just, you know, kind of feeling not sure they're going to be ready for it yet or something like that. Totally makes sense. The, the yeah. good news is you don't have to decide which one you're doing until like a month before. So you've got plenty of time to work that out. Um, and then in terms of early start, late start, any, any. Oh, it was very mixed. Lots of ah. people, but it was about half and half. And um, I, so I think that idea of, um, you know, for the shorter hikes, doing mm -hmm. it later. And then mm -hmm. the, as, as we get into the, the, you know, as the sunlight starts to 
reappear, we can, uh, and the longer hikes, we start mm -hmm. building towards our longer hikes, we can go a little earlier. Nice. All right. Cool. Thanks for that feedback, y'all. I appreciate it. Um, any other questions about the hike part before I move on to the fundraising part? I'm trying to figure out how to take people off mute if people want to. Uh, I think they have to unmute themselves. Oh, yeah. You can unmute yourselves if you'd like to just join in <laughs> and ask a question. Yeah. So, Angeles, this is a great question. You're saying, I've never done something like this. I don't know how it feels to hike 11 miles and I'm willing to try. That's fantastic. Um, and the the good news about the practice hikes is um, if you're able to, to either participate on Saturday mornings or do them on your own time, you'll get a sense of what it feels like because they, they um, right. increase in length and difficulty over time um, so that you can, you can get a sense of how it feels. Um, and if, you know, you're like most of, you know, the people who I know, uh, you've just maybe eaten more in the last month than most other months of the year and maybe been a little bit more sedentary. So um, it's a good time to start low <laughs> and work your way high. Um, the, 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 the goal isn't necessarily um, to be able to hike 11 miles tomorrow. And I think um, Allison I raised her hand. Allison, go yeah. ahead and take yourself off mute. Sure. Hi. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering if the practice hikes are always going to be on Saturdays. Because um, my business is open on Saturdays. But if it's early enough, I might be able to make them. Sweet. So, yes, they're always on Saturdays for now. Um, and I mentioned before that sometimes there's a group that forms that hikes on Sundays. Um, and uh yeah depending on what time you open up uh especially early on even if we you know start at 8 or 8 30 you'll be done with enough time to go and 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 get your get your business started um uh i thought came and then left again so if i if it comes back i'll i'll, I'll let you know what it was <laughs> other questions i thought i saw something else go by in the chat this is excited about having the structure. Oh, there was, will the hikes calendar be posted a month beforehand so you can plan? Yeah, great question, Diane. So uh, the, the calendar that I showed you the first page of, you get the whole calendar um, when you register. So um, that that's, yes, you can plan. <laughs> um, and it shows um, each year we have different hikes in different locations. So it, you'll get the, the calendar that shows where we're gonna be this year each weekend. Yeah, it'll be great. Um, all it's right. It's a fun way to learn about some of the trails you might not have known about or been on yet. Yeah, it's true. It's true. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again and keep keep uh, posting questions. You're welcome to um, keep doing that. We will get to all of them, I'm certain. Um, and here we go with more information on the fundraising part. So Many of our challengers start their epic journeys believing that the fundraising part is the hardest part. <laughs> and then once they kind of get into it, that belief often changes. And there's a couple of key pieces that that caused that change in belief to happen. Um, the first is having a really clear understanding of what we're fundraising for. So we're going to answer that fundamental question of why are we fundraising? Um, Naomi mentioned that she was going to explain more about her experience. And actually, I'm going to stop my screen share um, and um, ask Naomi, would you be willing to sort of reintroduce yourself and how you're connected to um, the program that we're fundraising for this year? Sure, I'd be delighted. So. Um... For 22 years, I was the chief executive officer at Santa Rosa Community Health, where we provide care for more than 40,000 people of low income, uh, Medi-Cal or uninsured uh, patients. And just before I retired, um, I helped launch a new program called the um, Age Well Pace, which is for um, people, older adults who have serious medical complications to support them to be able to live safely and with dignity at home. It's a, it's a very comprehensive program and we can talk about that more later. Um, but this program 
the Epic Trail Challenge, it was really, the, the story is simple. Lori Lynn reached out to me four years ago and said, I just learned about this during, just after COVID hit, I just learned about this great new way to fundraise that gets us all outside. And because we just didn't know how we were going to do fundraising anymore in, in COVID. And it was like, oh my gosh, this is all so aligned with our values around uh, health and equity and engaging the community to support um, a more just and equitable healthcare system in our community. So this particular program, so I'm still actively involved, even though I retired from the health center as the CEO, because I believe so much in the need to create um, a really loving and supportive and equitable way for our seniors and older adults in Sonoma County to age. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how AgeWell Pace will make that possible? Absolutely. So AgeWell Pace is a program that it's Pace is, is, is an acronym for a program of all inclusive care for the elderly. And when they say all inclusive care, they, they it really is that it's a, a day center where people get picked up and brought to for activities, socialization, medical care, physical and occupational therapy, nursing care, meals, all of it. Um, there's a comprehensive care coordination. This is, this is, these are people who have multiple complex medical needs um, who would otherwise be in a nursing home. And, you know, I don't know, we're all healthy enough to be thinking about going on an 11 or a 20 mile hike, but, um, I, you know, we're all going to age and I don't think any of us say to ourselves when we think about our, our golden years, I can't wait until I'm in a nursing home. And um, this program is really designed to make it possible for people who don't have high incomes to be able to stay at home uh, supported and their families and their caregivers supported with all the medical and social support that they need. Uh, to live um, with dignity and, and as much quality of life as they can have in their final years. So the funds that we raised through the Epic Trail Challenge are gonna support some really specific parts of that program. Can you talk about that a little bit for us? No. So the, the funds that we raised <laughs> for the got, Epic Trail Challenge. Effort, I'm so involved in the whole program, I forgot which specific pieces. Uh, I think it has to do with, right. Yeah, and so it's um, the therapy gym mm. and the courtyards. Oh, wonderful. Oh, well, that's so great. Okay, now I can talk about those. So they're in the, the location of the PACE Center where the um, participants will come um, has two really unique features about it. One of it is this beautiful, large, uh, with lots of windows, therapy gym for people to do their physical therapy and occupational therapy, strength training. And, you know, for people who are on Medicare, which I just joined six months ago, you're only allowed usually to get physical therapy if you're improving. But in a PACE program, physical therapy is for maintenance. And of course, we hope for improvement, but it's really about having people not decline and continue to be uh, gain strength and mobility and balance as much as possible, because that's so critical to being able to, to age at home. And then the other really unique feature, these are the two of the most, some of the most uh, wonderful parts of this location is that it is located um, in, in a place on, on State Farm Drive that has absolutely gorgeous gardens right outside of the activity area for all of the PACE participants. So we're uh, raising funds for the garden and the garden maintenance, which includes um, places that are actually like therapy gardens where people can interact and do plantings, but also have smells and different textures and all of these things that are very helpful for keeping people engaged in nature, um, stimulating all of their senses and um, promoting well-being. Nice. I think one of the reasons that we chose those as the, the recipients of funds for the, the Epic Trail Challenge is because it's so parallel to what we're receiving as we're going through the training pieces of it. So I, I really appreciate that um, 
it, 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 we're all getting the same, the same thing here. It, it may be in different ways. So and, uh, can I just jump in a little bit about my uh, experience on the Epic Trail Challenge too? Sure. So anyway, so this will be my fourth year hiking. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, I, I've had a hip replacement, I'm 65 years old, you know, I, yes, I'm very active, but I just love having a goal to strive for. It provides a structure, it provides motivation, and, the, and, the, and it provides community, which is really, really lovely and wonderful to connect with new people who share their love for, the, for nature and the outdoors and for health equity. Um, so we have these three elements uh, in common when, when we get together about what's important um, to us. And um, hike day is always super fun. Challenge day is just super fun. And you never know quite what. You think you've got a plan and then you show up and you find a new group and you just have a good time and you chat and you get to know each other and the day goes by and you barely know you hiked. Well, I usually do the 11 mile. I'm wondering if maybe this year I can do the 20, but, um, and, um, it's just a whole lot of fun, the whole process. Mm, thank you. That's a, that's a meaningful endorsement. I think I haven't <laughs> heard that before. So I appreciate knowing your experience. Sure. Excellent. Well, so, one of the things that we strive to do um, when we're putting together the Epic Trail Challenge is to come up with a compelling reason to fundraise. So hopefully we've succeeded in that for you this year um, in, in uh, age well pace and making a space for our elders to thrive and, and grow as, as they're aging. Um, so so uh, one piece of information I just want to share with folks that might not realize this is that in a, a few short years, by uh, 2030, 30% of Sonoma County is going to be over 65, and many of them will be low income and um, and with serious health conditions. So it, it just becomes very compelling that we need to provide a way uh, to care for these people with um, respect and dignity and mm -hmm. love. Well, and there's a piece of it too that I'm re reminded of as you're talking that even if we ourselves aren't aging or don't have aging parents or family members or loved ones in our lives, it's a community issue. Mm -hmm. um, that 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 impact on our larger community is is important. So thank you for adding that last piece in there. So um, the way uh, so I mentioned that one of the keys to success is understanding what we're fundraising. Um, the next key to successful fundraising um, is about the tons of support that's available to you. So more information about support in a moment. For now, let's talk about the structure and how the fundraising works. So each person in who participates in the Epic Trail Challenge has a minimum fundraising goal. So for an individual person, that minimum fundraising goal is $2,500. If you've participated with us in the past as part of a team, you can let go of any preconceptions you have about what teams look like because we've revamped it so that it's much simpler now. Um, so if you want to hike with one other person or 10 other people, um, if, if that appeals to you at all, you don't have to. You can be an individual fundraiser. Um, but if you want to, each person adds another thousand dollars onto the minimum fundraising goal. So if I wanted to hike as a team with Naomi, our fundraising goal would be thirty five hundred dollars. Hey, you want to hike as a team? Just kidding. So <laughs> <laughs> um, if we wanted to bring her husband along, then it would be forty five hundred dollars uh, and so on. So um, the, the, it, there's no upward limit of team members um, and there's no downward limit of team members. Um, as a perk for the amazing work that Santa Rosa Community Health Center staff does in the world. Um, we've always had it so that uh, the, the bar to participation is low and we ask them to set their own goals that are challenging in whatever ways they can be. So know, know and support with us that um, our, our amazing staff people um, have an opportunity to participate as well. So for some folks, these dollar amounts feel a little overwhelming and others might already have confidence that you can do it. And that's that's awesome. Where, wherever you are on the spectrum, we have a pretty comprehensive toolbox to help you reach your fundraising goal. So to start, um, we give you your own fundraising web page. It's for individuals or for teams. So this is an old page of mine. 
you can see it has my picture here. Um, it has a space for me to share my story um, and an opportunity for me to write updates, which was not something I, I did clearly because there's a zero there. Um, and there's this donate button. That's the most important part. <laughs> so um, uh, you, when, when you register, you are asked to build one of these pages and you, you put in your picture, you can use your story or you can use the default story that I wrote, although we'll talk more about why that's not the best idea. Um, and then you promote this um, in whatever way you normally interact with folks, whether that's email, social media, text, however you normally connect with folks in your life, that's how you let them know. Um, uh, I should note that this year there were folks who didn't use this at all and simply talked to their friends and brought me stacks of checks so whatever if you want to skip the website go ahead um i i can say that each year that i do this and participate as a fundraiser i am touched and amazed by how many unexpected people make a little donation to me um and who um are supporting me because both our hiking achievements and the program that we're supporting through fundraising are, are exciting and epic to the people who care about us and they want to see us succeed. So it's, it's, there's always a little boost um, attached to fundraising as well. Um, other fundraising support that we have um, include fundraising clinics. So I mentioned that I provide a fundraising clinic at least once a month. Um, we talk about stuff like overcoming, overcoming common barriers to fundraising and keeping the fun in fundraising. Um, I answer a lot of plans uh, or a lot of questions. I help folks develop fundraising plans um, and sometimes I just encourage people to sit during the fundraising clinic and do what do their emails or do their text messaging or whatever. Sometimes it's just making time to do it. That's that's often the, the main barrier. Um, there's another piece of this, um, which is I, I don't mean to brag, but I'm kind of an expert when it comes to fundraising. And so I'm available as an individual support person for every single person in the challenge. Um, I've worked with many challengers to create personal fundraising plans and then help them um, help hold them accountable to it. That's that's sometimes the piece, right? Like I can make a promise to myself that I don't keep, but if I promise you that I'm going to do it, then suddenly it, it works out. So um, that, that accountability piece is important for a lot of people. So I love working with folks in this way, and I hope you'll consider accepting my invitation to help you if you decide to join the challenge. Uh, and if you're more of a do-it-yourself kind of person, um, we have a really great toolkit that's just for you. It's full of um, templates about um, social media posts, potential emails that you can send to people, ideas for photos you can take. Um, there's ideas for videos um, and resources for fundraising ideas, which are abundant in many, many ways. Um, this is one of the teams uh, that uh, participated in our challenge this year in 20, uh, oh, last year in 2022. <laughs> I have to adjust my brain. Um, and they did a fundraiser selling pupusas, which I have to say is one of my favorite ideas so far. It was delicious. Um, another challenger last year built or took pictures on the trail and then created this calendar um, that she sold to her friends and to people who participated in the challenge. So um, those are just some of the ideas that people have um, uh, around how to raise funds that's, that's different than just direct asking. So um, here's here's the big fundraising secret. It's it's just this real honest recognition that our most successful fundraisers have simply and regularly shared about their experience, um, their personal reasons for getting involved with the challenge, um, and asked for support financially. Um, many people have different reasons for participating in the challenge. Um, today we heard. I want to recover from an injury. I've never done this before and I want to see if I can. Everybody needs a good challenge. Um, now that you've heard the reason we're fundraising, it might be because it might help your grandma someday or uh, because you care about elders in our community or because you support the mission of Santa Rosa Community Health. There's lots of reasons um, for wanting to be a part of this and whatever they are, um, sharing that and talking to people about it uh, and then asking is the thing that makes fundraising work. Um, so uh, that's, that's the big fundraising secret I've now given you 100% of my expertise, you can now go fundraise without, <laughs> with, with reckless abandon. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, 
Um, let's back up. Let's not let's not do next steps yet. So I want to talk to you about this concept that we've created because I know some of you are ready to jump in and get registered and you just wish I'd stop talking and tell you how to do that. That's awesome. Um, we're almost there to that part. For others, this feels like a big commitment that shouldn't be entered into lightly. So we've created this um, concept of recommitment. Um, it's an invitation to give the challenge a try for the first half of the program with very minimal commitment. So to get started, all we ask is that you give a $100 registration donation, which then applies towards your fundraising goal. Then you can try out the challenge for the next seven weeks. So you can see if you're able to get out of bed on Saturday mornings um, or if the Sunday hike thing gels. Um, determine if you like having cross training exercises to do a few times a week, if that structure works for you as much as you thought it would. Um, you can try on how it feels to ask your friends and family to support you and give you money and, you know, feel how that feels in your body. So for nearly two months, You'll be a full participant with access to all the resources, emails, training, the fundraising clinics, support, all of it um, with no, no, um, no, uh, anything required back from you aside from that first hundred dollar registration uh, donation. So then on March 24th, that's seven weeks into the program, what we call recommitment day, you and your team, if you have one, will have enough information to decide whether you want to continue forward or not. Um, and at that point, we ask you to commit to your minimum fundraising goal. So if at any time between now and March 24th, you decide eh, this doesn't work for me, I'm not in, um, then uh, you are welcome to step away. Uh, we, we call it, we, we bless and release you. We don't ask you any questions. We don't hard sell you. Just got it. Thank you for trying. Blessed be. Um, if you do decide to recommit, then you and your team are saying, okay, we're going to attempt to do this hike of 11 or 20 miles, and we're ready to raise our minimum fundraising amount. So then you'll have until May 5th, one week before challenge day, to reach your fundraising goal. Uh, in the highly unlikely event that you don't get there um, by May 5th, you have the option to make up the difference yourself. And those who meet or exceed their fundraising goals by May 5th will then be given a starting time for the Epic Trail Challenge at the crack of dawn on May 13th. So um, now we will go to this next slide and talk about next steps. So um, in the next couple of days, you're going to get an email from me at epic at srhealth.org. And it will have registration paperwork in it. Um, so if you've participated in the Epic Trail Challenge before, you will appreciate the fact that we have a new registration process. It's all entirely electronic this time. Um, so it's easier than ever to just fill out and certify your registration documents. So once you complete that, um, you'll get information on how to set up that fundraising page similar to the one that I sent you, but put your picture, not mine. Um, and you would set up your page and then you'd make your $100 donation. And once that's complete, then I will send you the full training calendar for the entire program, our fundraising toolkit, information about our training and fundraising clinics. You'll start receiving the Epic Scoop on Tuesday afternoons so that you'll see when the, uh, when the uh, what the practice hikes are going to be. You'll get the roots and all that good stuff. Um, and your Epic journey will have begun. Um, so uh, let's get started. Uh, this is a group of folks um, who hiked last year. This is out at Bodega Dunes. Uh, and it, it was a, it was a lovely, a lovely day. So, okay. Um, I will stop my screen share and see if anyone has any questions, um, about fundraising or hiking or any other thing. I, I'm just going to add, if you've never done fundraising before, this may seem a little scary to ask your friends and family for funds. It's just amazing how much people want to support you when you set a big goal like this for yourself and for helping our community you know the 10 20 30 dollar donations all add up really fast yeah thank you for saying that diane's asking how many people were involved in the hike last year uh, we had 
I think it was 82 people who registered and started, and there were 49 who participated on challenge day. And uh, those 49 folks raised $120,000, which was pretty awesome. What other questions do you have? Yeah, that is a wow. <laughs> <laughs> Really, it's very rewarding on so many levels, but personally as well as um, feeling of co contribution to making our, our community a better place. Yeah, nicely said. Maggie's asking, what happens if you don't make the money amount? So um, we ask folks to raise their minimum fundraising amount by May 5th, which is one week prior to um, challenge day. Um, and on that day, uh, first of all, I start working with you earlier than that <laughs> to, to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, on that day, uh, theoretically, you're given the opportunity to make up any difference by writing a check or putting it on your credit card or whatever. Um, for the last few years, though, uh, and I, I can't promise this will happen again, but for the last few years, what happened was challengers who had meet, met their goals um, started fundraising for their colleagues. They started saying, give to this person over here. They haven't met their goal yet. Um, so sometimes, sometimes your friends come and help you out, which is pretty awesome. Um, I, I, I hope that happens again. It's really beautiful when it does. Uh, and so, sorry, the, the rest of the answer is um, if if we get to May 5th and there's just no hope of, of meeting the fundraising goal, then you don't get to play on challenge day. Or you make up the difference. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jen. With your unpaid advertisement, the program works and the trainings are a lot of fun. Thank you. That's a nice endorsement. Uh, Angeles is saying, I haven't done fundraising before. Uh, but like the hiking 11 miles, hopefully you're willing to give it a try. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like the hardest part, and it so it turns out not to be that hard, even though if you've never done it before. It's a little a scary bridge to cross, but you'll be amazed. <laughs> it does sound scary. It's true, but don't worry. You've got brave folks walking alongside with you who know things, who can who can help out uh, if, if, if it's something you decide to do. So I think for now, I'm going to end, uh, ask that we end the official part of this adventure and thank everyone for coming. Um, and if you'd like to stick around and uh, have Old Home Week with a few folks that haven't seen each other for a while or ask other questions that you didn't want on the recording, you're welcome to do that. Um, and uh, in the uh, otherwise, uh, I will email you in the next couple of days and look forward to receiving your registrations or your questions. Um, you also have all my contact information, so um, you're welcome to reach out to me if you have any questions as well. Mm. So Naomi, people do you are wanna... expressing their appreciation. I'm glad you found this helpful and useful, and um, we're all available anytime to answer additional questions that come up. Nice. You want to go ahead and stop the recording? You betcha. Sweet.